Um, Welcome to On Life Health webinar series presented in conjunction with Health Trust Slice of Life program. And I'm your host, Ashley Benningfield. If you've been a part of previous Health Trust webinars, you know that Olivia was pretty much my co-pilot, but unfortunately she has taken another opportunity. So I'm flying solo today. So please are with me as I attempt to navigate this technology on my own. Typically, she was the one running it, and I was there to serve as a co-host. But um, please just continue to type in the chat box and let me know if you can't hear me or if you hear the background noise. So just a little bit about me. I am originally from Germantown, Tennessee, which is right outside of Memphis. I graduated from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Uh, in 2004 with a bachelor's degree in dietetics. And then from there, I went on to complete my dietetic internship at Vanderbilt University here in Nashville. I am a registered dietitian technician and I've been on life for almost 16 years. Um, it'll be 16 years this January. I've held several positions here. Um, I currently serve as our content and digital media specialist. On life is the only place I've ever worked. And I love cleaning and organizing. I love working out and then spending time with my husband and nine-year-old son. So for those of you that have joined before, welcome back. And for those of you who may not have had the chance to join in, welcome. I look forward to interacting with everyone today. Today's webinar is Healthy Eating on a Budget. And before we begin, just wanted to let you know that it is being recorded in a listen-only mode. So Obviously, you'll be able to hear me, but I can't hear you, or I hope you'll be able to hear me. Um, and the last 10 to 15 minutes of this webinar, I've set aside for questions and answers, but at any time throughout the presentation, you can type your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the, the screen, and I'll attempt to answer as many of those questions as possible. And of course, again, if you're having any sound issues, please, please, please let me know. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've all heard it before, eating healthy is expensive. And while there's a common misconception that healthy foods are more costly, following a healthy eating pattern does not mean you have to spend more money. Yes, some healthy foods can be more expensive, but you can make simple changes in your food choices that affect your overall health and wallet. In this webinar, you'll learn how easy it is uh, to eat well without spending a lot of money. You'll learn how to create a grocery game plan to help you shop smarter and get the most nutritional bang for your buck. You'll also learn about some budget-friendly tools that you can use to help you eat healthier without breaking the bank. So first, I want to know, do you have a grocery budget? And you can type your answers in the in the, or your responses in the chat box. I'll give you a few, few seconds to chime in there. No, no, okay. Yes, sort of, I love that. So if you don't have a grocery budget, I'm hoping that maybe by the end of this presentation, I can help you kind of get some ideas for creating one, more of a range. I agree, Christy, same. Um, well, for those of you that do have a grocery budget, do you stick to that budget? Yes, good job. Yeah, okay. And if you do stick to that budget, how do you make sure you stick to it? The list, great. Great. All right. Well, um, like I said, I hope um, if you do stick to your budget, great. I hope maybe you can maybe share some tips at the end for how if I haven't covered those during the presentation. So um, let's continue on. And first, I wanted to talk about how grocery stores make you spend more. So, oh, I'm sorry. I got click happy there. Um, let me go. Actually, I'm just gonna stay right here because I don't wanna mess anything else up because if I hit the button, I'm afraid it'll 
do something do something um, but grocery stores want you to spend money with them. That means that they'll do what they can to create a comfortable and enjoyable environment for the, their customers. And that environment is set up to entice you to buy more. And did you know that the grocery stores contain an average of 50,000 items? That's a, that's a lot of choices. Uh, and when it comes to our purchases, there are several factors that can impact what we buy. Um, when it comes to the environment of the grocery store, item placement and shopper flow are big components. And products, they're strategically placed throughout the store. So if you think about it, when you're at the checkout line, what do you typically see? You see a lot of candy, magazines, gum, and these products are deliberately placed there. Um, also, the aisles, um, the displays that you see set up at the end of the aisles, those are also um, deliberately placed there. Um, but smells can also entice our purchases. So if you think about, think about it, the bakery, um, typically that's almost always near the front of the store, you know, you get that fresh baked good smell as soon as you walk in. It kind of makes you want to get a cookie. Um, or I know the Kroger that I go to here in Thompson Station, it has a little Starbucks right there. So of course, as soon as you walk in, that's the first thing, you know, you smell. And especially during the holidays, the pumpkin and the peppermint kind of makes you want to, oh, grab one while you're shopping. Um, and then sometimes just when you think you have the store layout and the aisle numbers memorized, they switch it up on you and everything is rearranged. Um, but they do this often uh, and it makes customers walk up and down the aisles to find what they want. And the longer, you know, this takes longer and the longer you're in the store, the more like the more you're likely to buy, right? Can anyone agree with that? All right, so now why eating healthy is important. So before we get into how to eat healthy on a budget, I just wanted to briefly touch on why it's important to eat healthy in the first place. So fueling our bodies with good nutrition is important for all areas of our health, physically, mentally, emotionally, and even financially. And no matter what our age, good nutrition is essential for keeping us healthy. So for example, eating a healthy diet helps children grow and develop properly, and it reduces their risk of chronic diseases like obesity. Additionally, adults who eat a healthy diet live longer and have a lower risk of obesity, heart disease, type two diabetes, and even certain cancers. And then finally, also healthy eating can help people with chronic diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes. It can help them manage or improve their conditions and prevent future complications. And eating healthy also helps our mental and emotional health. It can help reduce stress, improve our cognitive performance, give us more energy and boost our mood. But in addition to all of those things, good nutrition can also, um, or our financial health is also a part of you know, that aspect and good nutrition can impact our financial health. So cooking healthy meals at home, it saves us money in the long run by reducing the medical cost that's associated with eating an unhealthy diet. And cooking at home rather than eating out helps keep our food budget under control, leaving more room in our budget for achieving our financial goals. So we know why it's important to eat healthy, but why is it important to have a food budget? Can anyone type that in the chat box? Why do you think it's important to have a food budget? Well, food is one of the biggest parts of our budget. So if you're trying to save money, reducing your food budget is a great place to start. On average, food is the third largest household expense after housing and transportation. But unlike rent or the price of gas, you have control over your food spending habits. So first you wanna take stock of what you're currently spending. Where do you typically buy groceries? How much are you spending each week or each month? And how often do you eat out? Once you have an idea of what you're spending, it can help you determine your food budget. And this may seem overwhelming and changing your habits can be a challenge, but even the small changes add up. So if you reduce your spending by just $20 each week, you could save over $1,000 a year. All right, now we're gonna move on to some tips for um, eating a healthy 
um, eating healthy on a budget and some ways that you can save at the store. First, um, you need to create a grocery game plan. Plan your meals. People often forget this part um, and you end up at the store multiple times a week. I think I saw someone a few minutes ago say that they do shop multiple times a week and everyone is different. That might work well for you. I know my neighbor across the street, that's what she does. Um, for me, I'm the opposite. I like to plan my meals and go try to go once. Um, not going to say I don't forget things and have to go back, but planning your meals for the week can help eliminate the daily hassle of deciding what's for dinner, and it can save you time, money, and effort. Um, when it comes to meal planning, though, you want to think about your schedule. Do you have any appointments? Are there any extracurricular activities or sports practices after school? You want to make sure that your meal plan fits your daily routine. So, for example, on your busiest days, you want to choose meals that you can easily prepare and then save the recipes that take longer for those days or evenings when you don't have a lot going on. Um, there's this funny meme that I saw a few weeks ago. It said, everyone has practice so we can either have dinner at 4.30 or 9.15. And I know that for my family, that, that couldn't be more true. Um, my nine-year-old son is more active than ever. And we just wrapped up fall travel baseball and flag football. And now he's moving on to basketball. And he would have practice from seven to eight during the week or 5.30 to seven. And most of our weekends were consumed with baseball tournaments. Sometimes those can last all day on Saturdays and Sundays. And Sundays when I typically grocery shop. So you have to consider um, what's going on during the week so that you can make sure that you take that into account. So um, typically if we were having practice or something, I would do something quick and easy like turkey BLTs or a crock pot meal or something like that. Um, and then on the, you know, the nights when we didn't have anything, I would try to, you know, come up with something new. Um, the second part of planning your meals is involving everyone in the planning process. So whether it's your children, your spouse, your partner, um, involving them in the meal planning process can help ensure that you're buying enough food and also eliminating waste. Um, you can get creative by setting things like meatless Mondays or taco Tuesdays. We do the taco Tuesdays a lot at my house and, um, you know, it's something my son looks forward to. Uh, and it makes it easy on me because that's one less day that I have to uh, account for when, you know, going to the grocery. Um, and then you want to, um, the next part of the game plan is to take inventory of what ingredients you have on hand. Um, this will keep you from buying things that you don't need. You can take everything out of the pantry um, if you want. This will allow you to see what you have on hand and give you the opportunity to also declutter and toss out anything that's expired. Um, and then as you put things back into the pantry, um, you can keep a tally or running list of everything that you're putting away. And that way you'll be more organized and it'll make, much easy, it'll make it easier when you go the next time, you'll, you'll know what you have on hand. Um, you can also take a picture of that inventory list so that you can refer to it when you're out shopping. Um, the other thing you can do is um, you can take inventory before planning your meals and then use what you have to create your meal plan. So I might make my meal plan and then take inventory of what I have and make my list based off of what I need, or you can do vice versa. So, but let's say that you have several ingredients on hand like canned tuna or whole grain pasta and you don't know what to make. If you do a simple internet search on those things, you'll find endless recipes of what you can create with those specific ingredients. Um, it's important to know that there is no right or wrong way to do this. So like I said, you can take inventory of what you already have on hand and then decide what you want to make or vice versa. But either way that you do it, making a plan and sticking to it will help you make um, more healthy and cost-effective meals. All right. So the next step in the game plan is to make a shopping list. So who makes the list? I saw a few people um, earlier make a list uh, that made the list. Mm -hmm. Yes. Same. So if I notice I'm out of something, I'll I keep a little notepad in my, I call it my junk door or whatever. It's right next to the refrigerator, but I'll just be like, I'll just write it down and just keep a running list. 
um, of everything. So um, only write down the items that you need. Um, this is how I prefer to do it. And like I said, my neighbor, she goes to the store uh, each day to get meat or whatever else they need for dinner that night. But I prefer to get it done all at once. But as far as your list goes, you can write it down on paper. But if you're someone who prefers to go paperless, you can also use the notes feature on your smartphone or even download a free app like Out of Milk. Um, do any of you currently use any apps to help you keep your grocery list together? I want to use any list. Nice. Yeah, I use my notes feature sometimes. I used to keep, oh, I forget what it was called. It might have been any list. Um, good old paper and pen. I love it, Linda. Carrie. Oh, list ease. I've never heard of these. List ease. Notes. Okay. Um, yeah, so either any way that you decide to do it. Tanya, yes, I am actually going to go over some apps at the end. Um, so definitely. And I'm also keeping a, a note, you know, a list right now of, of the ones that you all are um, suggesting. So, um, but once you have your list, the biggest part of that is sticking to it. You'll spend less time shopping and you'll save money because you're less likely to make those impulse purchases with the list. And one of the biggest reasons people stray from their grocery list is they shop when they're hungry. Does anyone ever do that? Go to the grocery hungry? Um, but when you, when you go to the store hungry, you tend to crave foods that aren't good for you um, or your budget. So to avoid this, you can grab uh, a healthy snack before you head to the store, which is typically what I try to do, um, depending on what time it is. But um, finally, um, the last step in creating your grocery game plan is to do your homework. Uh, determine where you will shop. Check your local newspaper for weekly store ads and flyers for sales and coupons. And download your favorite grocery store app. You can use it uh, to check for weekly sales and download digital coupons. Um, you can plan your meals around items that are on sale. And if you use items frequently and they're on sale, then you can stock up on those. Um, for example, if you use chicken broth regularly, you might get a discount if you buy, say, 12 cans instead of just two or three. But you want to be sure that the items aren't going to spoil if you're not using them right away. All right. The next tip is to shop smart. Um, so as I previously mentioned, grocery stores are designed to make you spend more than you planned. And in fact, over 47% of grocery store purchases are impulse buys but you can take control of your grocery spending by shopping with a strategy. So first, um, you can clip coupons. Does anyone clip coupons? I know I do. I do the paper coupons, but also do digital as well. Um, you can uh, check for coupons and promotional ads in the mail, in the Sunday newspaper, and also online. And I typically shop at Kroger. I'm not sure. Um, what stores you all have around your area. But um, I know about once a month, I do get a booklet full of coupons from Kroger. Um, it's like the best customer bonus or something like that. Um, and it's for savings off of some of the most frequent items that I buy. Um, I know the other day I got one that was like, I think $20 off if you spent $180 or more, something like that. So sometimes it really works out great. Um, you can also clip, you know, manufacturer coupons, but you can also see, check with the grocery store, um, to make sure they have downloadable ones. Um, and they make it very easy these days. Uh, some items have peel off coupons. I don't know if you've ever seen those um, on an item and, you know, you can like save a dollar if you peel it off at the cash register or whatever. Um, some aisles can have the take one coupon offer that's along the shelves, if you've ever seen those. Um, but try to only use coupons for items that you use or need. Don't, don't just try to buy something just because you have a coupon for it. I used to be really, really bad about that. Um, and go through them often and toss any that are expired. Yes, Jacqueline, it is hard to shop coupons for just few people. Um, that is um, many items for large quantities, yes. Um, a lot of the things I know that it was like buy four or something. I'm like, I don't need four, but I don't, 
sometimes I'm like, I don't want the coupon to go to waste. So it is tempting to go ahead and buy those things even when you don't need it. Um, the next thing is comparing a store brands um, or comparing brands. So many store brands um, are very similar in quality and nutrition and the taste um, to their name brands. They're often less expensive. So you just need to compare the items and find the best value for you. Another tip is to look for deals that are right under your nose. The priciest items tend to be at eye level. So be sure to look at the upper and lower shelves too. And then find out if your store has a loyalty program. In most cases, it's free to sign up and then you can um, receive coupons, special offers and discounts for being a loyal customer. So now let's look at um, how you can shop smart and put you know, be cart smart and put things in your cart that are going to benefit you. So incorporating more fruits and vegetables is a great way to improve your nutrition. And whether it's fresh, frozen, or canned, fruits and vegetables are a delicious way to make every bite count. Shopping the perimeter of the grocery store is a good way to add healthy items to your cart. That's typically where you'll find the produce section um, with fresh fruits and vegetables on display. And many Americans need to eat more fruits and vegetables. They contain fiber, antioxidants, and a variety of vitamins and minerals that can reduce the risk of chronic diseases like heart uh, disease and diabetes. Um, I saw someone mention earlier about buying in the peak season. Um, fresh fruits and vegetables are usually less expensive and more flavorful during their peak season. I've listed a few um, on the slide for each season, um, but you can also go to the website that I've listed here and um, find a full guide to help you explore different fruits and vegetables throughout the year. So I thought that would be, um, be helpful. Um, but only try to buy what you can use before it spoils. I think I mentioned that a few minutes ago and you wanna check the produce for bruising or broken skin. But uh, to help prevent food waste, did you know that you can also um, use the leafy greens from veggies like radishes or beets and turnips and other recipes? Has anyone ever tried to do that? I have not, to be honest, but interested in seeing if anyone else has. Um, you um, can buy fresh fruits and veggies in their whole form instead of ones that are pre-cut um, to help save some money. And unless you're gonna wash, dry, and container the produce yourself, it's probably just best to wash it before you eat it. Um, and a few ways that you can incorporate more fruits and vegetables. Um, take an apple, orange, or banana with you on the go for a quick, healthy snack. Um, those whole, food, whole foods will help keep you energized and less tempted to go to the vending machine. Um, eat baby carrots with hummus for a snack or top your turkey sandwich with some extra vegetables. Next, we'll talk about um, canned foods. Um, while the edge of the store is where you'll find the freshest goods, there are also plenty of healthy options on the inside aisles. You want to look for nutritious, shelf-stable items. Um, canned fruits and vegetables have a longer shelf life. They're a convenient source of nutrition, but there are some things to watch out for. So canned vegetables um, can contain added sodium from the canning process. You want to look for low sodium, reduced sodium, or no salt added varieties. And check the nutrition facts label to help you choose the item with the lowest amount of sodium. Um, to help reduce the sodium even more, you can also drain and rinse the canned veggies. Um, canned protein foods like beans, peas, lentils, um, like kidney beans or lima beans and chickpeas, and also canned meats and seafood like canned chicken, tuna, salmon, and sardines, these store well and they're a low cost option. But like the canned vegetables, they too can also have added sodium. So be sure to check for lower sodium versions of canned beans and meats as well. And for a delicious and quick way to add canned fruits and vegetables to your meals, you can serve canned fruit as a dessert and top with a low fat or fat free yogurt. And also um, another one is draining a can of corn or pinto beans and add to a soup. I know I do this when I make taco soup. Um, it's delicious. All right, um, moving on to frozen. Um, you can also find healthy items in the frozen food section. 
And frozen fruits and vegetables are picked at the ripest and flash frozen to preserve optimal nutrition. They can last several months in the freezer and they can be a great economical choice. But just like the canned fruits and vegetables, there are a few things to watch out for. So some sauces and seasonings can add sodium. Again, checking the nutrition facts label to check the sodium content and then looking for frozen vegetables with no added seasonings or sauces. Um, you can also look for frozen fruits without added sugars. And a few ways here to add um, more frozen fruits and vegetables to your, to your meals. You can add frozen berries to your oatmeal. Make a healthy smoothie with frozen fruit and non-fat or low-fat milk or yogurt. Or toss in some frozen veggies to your pasta dish. And when it comes to the frozen food entree, sodium is always a challenge. So you want to opt for balanced meals that provide a serving of vegetables and whole grains. Um, before we move on to the next step, does anyone have any suggestions that um, they wanted to add here about how they're, you know, how do you try to be cart, cart smart? Like, how do you make health the healthy decisions of what you put in your cart? Make sure you add a veggie with every meal, yes. Frozen fruit and yogurt. Um, sounds delicious. Chuck organic. What about meat? Um, meat is often the most expensive part of the meal, right? Um, and it can be a challenge um, when it comes to your food budget. So. Um, here are some budget-friendly tips um, to help you when you're shopping for meat. You can choose your cut of meat carefully. You want to try to go for the lean, extra lean, loin, or round cut. Um, trim visible fat before cooking. Um, if you prefer chicken or turkey, um, the white meat or the breast has less fat than the dark meat. Um, incorporating more fish. Um, for more wallet-friendly fish, you can choose tilapia and cod. They're mild-flavored and about one-third the price of more expensive fish, like halibut and sea bass. Um, another way to stretch your meat budget is to make meals where the meat isn't the star of the dish. So like I was saying um, earlier, trying to go meatless Mondays, for example. Um, so dishes like stir fries, curries, stews, and burrito bowls. Um, and you can buy lean meat and fish in bulk when it's on sale and freeze portions for later use, of course, if that's um, feasible for your family. Um, all right, so moving on to tip number three, stretching your food dollar. Um, at the store, uh, check expiration dates. You can usually find them listed on the side or bottom of a product. So someone just said that making sure that they don't buy foods before they will spoil, fruit, especially the fruits and veggies. Um, limiting the junk, um, figuring how much money you're spending on items such as soda, cookies, crackers. Um, once you know how much you're spending on those things, you can focus on avoiding or limiting purchasing them. And don't pay more for convenience. Limit the purchase of convenience foods like frozen dinners, pre-cut vegetables, and instant rice and oatmeal. These will cost more than if you were to make your own. Just like it costs more for a restaurant to prepare your meals, it also costs more for your grocery store to chop and prep your food. And in some cases, pre-cut fruits and veg vegetables cost nearly 400% more than their whole counterpart. You can chop fruits and vegetables on your days off to use in recipes throughout the week. Um, to keep your food fresh, properly store your prep foods in airtight containers. Uh, you might need to prep foods like peppers and cucumbers, these have a shorter shelf life and um, you can try to do these in smaller batches like twice a week. Um, we already talked about shopping store brands. Um, a lot of stores offer their own brand of products that uh, often taste the same and cost less than their name brands. Again, looking high and low. So the more expensive brands or the more expensive items are usually at eye level. Um, and then the store brands and the better buys are often located at the top and bottom. Um, Grabbing from the back. Stores usually stock their shelves from back to front and placing the newest items behind the old ones. 
For the freshest items, grab from the back, especially in the produce, dairy, and meat sections. And then we talked a lot about buying in bulk. And um, when it comes to buying staple foods like beans, brown rice, um, nuts, and oats, um, these foods can provide more servings at a lower cost. However, if you're just shopping for one, buying in bulk may not be the right thing to do. So um, you can use the price tag to determine the best option when it comes to comparing multiple items. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but you can also buy family packs of meat, like chicken and larger bags of frozen vegetables. All right, understanding the price tag. How many of you um, actually look at the price tag and, and know what it means and um, use it to make um, determine what item you're going to buy? Good. Wow, it sounds like a lot of you do. So the price tag on an item can tell you a lot of information. So let's briefly take a look at um, what the numbers mean. Tanya, I look at the price, but all the other stuff on there, I have no idea. Well, I'm hoping that this can help. So the retail price is how much you pay for each item. And the unit price is how much an item costs per amount. So per pound, per ounce, per quart, whatever. And when comparing um, two products, it can be beneficial to look at the unit cost. For example, let's say you're looking at two containers of yogurt a 32 ounce container and a six ounce container. The 32 ounce retails for $1.62 and has a unit price of five cents per, pound, per ounce, excuse me. And the six ounce retails for 72 cents and has a unit price of 12 cents. So based on that unit price, you can tell that the larger container is the better buy because you're getting more for your money. I know it sounds like a lot, but um, it can um, be helpful if you can find it and really understand what it means. All right, so cooking on a budget doesn't have to mean you have to eat ramen noodles and canned beans every night. You can create healthy milk with just a few ingredients. You can stock your pantry with beans, grains, and pasta that you can whip into a quick meal when you don't feel like shopping. One technique that you can use is called batch cooking. Um, it involves making one base recipe that can then be adapted into different dishes. You don't need special equipment. Um, but some people find that slow cookers or crock pots come in handy. Um, you might have the weekends off, so you can limit your time in the kitchen during the week by making large meals on those days and eating them throughout the week. How many of you use crock pots or um, I think it's an Instapot? Um, I actually used to have an Instapot, but I ended up getting rid of it. I use a crock pot a lot. Yes. Mostly in the fall, winter, same. Nothing like a bun like comfort food um, in the winter. Um, so think about casseroles and soups. You can prepare a large batch of them and freeze them in individual containers. Um, you can eat them throughout the week, freeze them for later. Um, if you have leftovers, you can store them in the freezer, um, but make sure that you remind yourself that they're in there so that they don't go to waste. I know I'm guilty of this. I forget what's in my freezer and then I go, I'm like, what is this? And it's got freezer burn on it. It's just not good anymore. Uh, you can even plan your next week's meals based on the leftovers that you have. There are a lot of easy one skillet, one pot meals out there. And at the end of the presentation, I've added some links um, to those uh, recipes. Um, you can also create your own garden. Seeds are inexpensive. And with a little time and effort, you can have your own herbs, tomatoes, and much more. And learning how to grow your own vegetables will not only save you money at the grocery, but you'll stay active with a new hobby. I do not garden. How many do, does anyone else garden or um, they have community gardens? I know my sister likes to garden. I don't at all. <laughs> I know my neighbor does. She has all these herbs and everything. I do extensively. Wow. Varying degrees of success. I would be right there with you, Linda. Um, so uh, we talked about making uh, big batches of foods that you can enjoy and refrigerate or freeze uh, for later. Um, lasagna is another good one. Uh, you can use shredded chicken or pork to pair with different sides throughout the week. Um, but you can also stretch your food dollar 
uh, and avoid food, food spoilage by properly storing your food. Making sure your refrigerator is at or below 40 degrees and your freezer is at or below zero. Refrigerate or freeze meat, poultry, eggs, fish, shellfish, uh, ready to eat foods and leftovers within two hours and never store cooked or ready to eat food below raw food in the refrigerator. Does anyone know why that might be the case? To never store cooked or ready to eat food below raw food. Right, so the raw, the juice could drip down to the, um, to your ready to eat food. Also storing leftovers properly. <clears throat> I think I've said this several times, the putting it in shallow containers um, can allow it to quit, cool quicker um, and then using it within three to four days. But you can keep your food even more fresh by checking out the Food Keeper app. It's a great tool for smart food storage and it gives tons of information and resources on the safe handling, preparation and storage of various foods. There's also an add to calendar feature to help you reduce food waste at home. So you can receive reminders to use up your food before they before it spoils. I thought that was very interesting. I don't use it, um, but I, I might start using it. Um, and so I think it's available for both Android and Apple devices. But if you don't have a smartphone, no problem. You can also um, visit the website um, and post it that at the end as well. So now that you know how to maximize your food dollar, let's take a look at how to eat healthy when you're dining out. How often does anyone eat out more than twice a week? Or not at all? Three times, yes. Pandemic is changing things exactly. <clears throat> Usually on weekends, twice a week, same, <clears throat> same here. So with the hectic pace of daily life, it's easy to rely on someone else to do the cooking, right? But restaurant food can cost considerably more than cooking at home. In fact, one study found that restaurant takeout costs five times more than the same meal at home. In addition, restaurants offer larger portions that are high in fat, calories, and sodium. But dining out doesn't mean you have to get off track with your health or your budget. So let's look at some budget-friendly suggestions for making the healthiest choices when you dine out. Again, planning ahead. Checking out the restaurant's website and knowing what you will order beforehand um, can help sticking to your plan once you get there. Uh, so if you know you're going out to eat for dinner, adjust your other meals and eat a little bit less during the day. That doesn't mean skipping meals, but just watching it throughout the day. Sharing an entree can also help. As I mentioned, portion sizes at restaurants are often, they're actually two to three times the recommended portion size. So sharing a meal can help reduce portions and be more budget friendly. Choose healthy sides. For example, instead of mashed potatoes, you can ask for steamed vegetables. Instead of fridge fries, ask for a side salad. Or instead of onion rings, you can ask maybe for fresh fruit. Um, but also just setting a goal to eat out 25% less. The good news is you don't have to eat out, you don't have to give up eating out entirely. If you currently spend what the average American household spends on restaurant food, which is $3,500 per year, you could save over $875 by eating out just 25% less. So here's how you can do that. So track how often you buy ready-made meals for two months. You want to count every meal prepared outside your home, including restaurants, fast food, convenience stores. Then you divide that total by two to get your average number of restaurant meals per month. Then make a goal to eat out 25% less the next month. So let's say you currently eat out 20 times a month. That means your goal would be to eat out no more than 15 times a month. So just setting that small goal can make a big difference um, in how much you're spending. And when it comes to Fast food, we know America is known as the fast food nation and uh, that's for a good reason. Many of us eat fast food for convenience and price, but there's also a significant health cost attached to eating fast food. While many choices are high in fat, calories and sodium, eating on the go does not have to be hazardous to your health. So a lot of what I've said about ordering at restaurants also applies to fast food as well. Checking the website 
our menu ahead of time, ordering smaller portions, and focusing on incorporating healthier items. And the good news is that many restaurants these days and fast food places have added healthier menu choices. And they've also started listing the nutritional information on their menu in order to help you make those healthier choices. Now we'll look at a few budget friendly tools. Um, how many of you order your groceries online? Anyone? Okay, me too, I do. However, I'll take that back. The past two weeks I have not, but that was due to unforeseen circumstances, but typically I do. Um, studies show that people make far fewer impulse buys when shopping for groceries online. And I can 100% attest to this. I use Kroger ClickList and I have the app on my phone. I clip the digital coupons, but I also save money because ordering groceries online keeps me on track because I can see what's in my digital cart and I can see the running total. So if I feel like I'm going overboard, I'll remove something from my cart. And that definitely beats the alternative where I'm actually in the store and I get up to the register and I have no clue what my estimated cost is gonna be until I get up there. And the cashier will be like, your total is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. At that point, it's too late to put something back. Um, the other good thing I like about online ordering is, well, this has changed since COVID. It used to be $4.95 for the pickup fee. But now since COVID, they have actually waived that charge. So there is no uh, pickup fee. But let's say I'll order a small bag of um, pretzels or something. If they are out of that small bag, they'll give me the larger bag for the same price as the small one, which I think is 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 great. So I forget what time what I ordered one time and when they brought it out, I was like, oh my goodness, that is that's awesome. Because I would have never bought the the bigger one. Um, but there's also apps like Basket and Flip that are great for helping you stay on track with your budget. They tell you all of the local grocery stores in your area and it shows you their coupons and their weekly deals all in one place. So it's really helpful. So let's say you're going to do burgers this week and you want to go to the store that has the lowest price on ground beef. Well, using apps like these can let you see it all right there and you don't have to waste time driving around trying to look for the best deal. Um, so there's dozens of apps, um, but these are the ones that I thought were most relevant. Um, I have been keeping track of a few of other, the other ones that you all mentioned. Does anyone else have any other apps that they use to help with budgeting at all or groceries specifically? I bought them. I've heard of that one, but I've not used it. Mint, Instacart. Great. Okay, Amazon Prime. Yes, love Amazon Prime. I've never used it for groceries though. Only, you know, packages that are delivered here <laughs> all the time. Um, okay, great. Well, before we wrap up, I did want to share with you that starting um, beginning 1-1 one, one of 22, you'll have access to a new educational digital self-guided program called Healthy Eating on a Budget. Um, and we covered a little bit of what's provided in there, but the program goes into a lot more detail. Um, you can see the six themes listed here, kind of what we touched on today. Um, but yes, the lots more information provided in the program, um, a lot more additional resources provided. So um, be looking for um, more information on that. And here are some um, additional resources that I've put together um, that, where you can find more information on um, shopping on a budget, meal planning. Um, there's the seasonal food guide. Um, and then also the one skillet, one pot meals. Um, just a few easy ones that I've listed there. Um, if you have uh, more resources that um, you'd like to share, please feel free to do so. Um, you can also log into your secure account on Health Trust Secure Enrollee Portal and click the online help button where you can find resources related to 
today's topic. And I hope that um, you've learned that with a little creativity and careful planning that you can eat well and enjoy healthy food on any budget. And now I want to know what is one takeaway that you've learned from today's presentation? Is there anything that you learned new or anything that was surprising to you? Yeah. Washing the canned veggies. Yay. Yes, on Patty, try online shopping. You should. It seems it is a great way to go just because it can. I like how you can just remove things, you know, if you don't. It makes you really think about what you really need at the time. All right. Well, it looks. Um, so we're finished for today. I'd like to thank Health Trust for giving me the opportunity to share this information with you. Um, thank you for joining and stay tuned for more details on our next webinar, which will be in February of 2022. Were there any questions before we sign off? I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry for the um, uh, technical issues. Thank you so much, Ella. Appreciate that. Thank you, Paulina, Jacqueline. Thank you all. Oh, it's going so fast I can't do that. So thank you so much. You want to see the website again? Um, let's see how I can go back. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can go back to that real quick for you the list of additional resources. Does that work? Can you see that? Okay, I'll leave that up there for, for a second. Um, <laughs> I'm Laura Smithy. great. Yes, um, yeah, Carrie is right. Um, Health Trust normally posts a link to the recording of the webinar um, on their site within a few days, so you can go back and watch all of, um, all of it again. So I appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you or speaking with you in February. Thank you, guys.